The nearest neighbor algorithm approximates the posterior as Gaussian by ignoring all but one hypothesis. This has the disadvantage that we underestimate the posterior uncertainties. In this video, we present the probabilistic data association algorithm, which approximates the posterior as Gaussian by instead merging all hypotheses in the posterior. Compared to nearest neighbor, the probabilistic data association algorithm does not underestimate the uncertainties to the same extent. Like the nearest neighbor algorithm, the probabilistic data association algorithm approximates the posterior as Gaussian after both the update and the prediction step. Of course, if the models are linear and Gaussian, the prediction step can be performed without introducing additional approximations. We will again assume that we have a constant PD and a linear and Gaussian object likelihood, GK, whereas we can handle general intensity functions. Under the assumption that the predicted density is this Gaussian density given by the PDA prediction, the posterior after the update, denoted P brief, is a Gaussian mixture with mk plus 1 terms. These weights and densities are computed in the same way as the weights and densities in P brief for the nearest neighbor algorithm, but they generally take different values since they are computed based on a different predicted density. To clarify that they are different, we could have introduced a superindex PDA on W theta k and P theta k, but I've omitted that here to keep the notation simpler. Again, the question is how to approximate this Gaussian mixture as a Gaussian density. The basic idea in probabilistic data association is to use merging and approximate the posterior as a Gaussian density with the same mean and covariance as P brief. That is, we replace the Gaussian mixture with a Gaussian density that has the same mean and covariance as the Gaussian mixture. In other words, we set the posterior mean x bar k given k to the expected value of xk, where xk is distributed according to p brief. Also, the posterior covariance p k given k is the covariance of xk, where xk is distributed according to p brief. Of course, we then approximate the posterior distribution as Gaussian with this mean and this covariance. One can show that this minimizes something called the kullback leibler divergence between p brief and the Gaussian approximation. The kullback leibler divergence is commonly used to measure similarity between densities, and this result tells us that this is the best among all Gaussian approximations, in this specific sense. Still, this is mostly a side note, and if you haven't heard about the kullback leibler divergence before, you can ignore this comment. Anyway, the basic idea behind the PDA algorithm is to select the moments like this, but to obtain an algorithm, we still need to figure out how to compute these two moments. One can show that the expected value of this Gaussian mixture is the sum over the expected values, x hat theta k, of xk given theta k, weighted by the probabilities, w theta k, of the different components. You can think of this as the expected value of the expected value of the Gaussian components. The covariance of a Gaussian mixture is slightly more involved and contains two parts. The first is a weighted sum of the covariances of the different Gaussian components. You can think of this as the average covariance. The second part is a weighted sum over the squared differences between the mean of the mixture and the mean of the individual component. This part can be viewed as a measure on how much the means are spread out. Let us look at an example where we have a Gaussian mixture and want to compute its mean and covariance. Suppose the Gaussian mixture is such that with probability 0.5, we have a Gaussian density with mean minus 3 and variance 2, and with probability 0.5, we have a Gaussian density with mean 3 and variance 2. This density is illustrated in this figure. According to the result on the previous slide, the expected value of x is then 0.5 times minus 3 plus 0.5 times 3, which is 0. Considering that x takes values around minus 3 and 3 with equal probability, it makes sense that the expected value is 0. The covariance of x separates into two parts, where the first is the average variance of the two components. Since both have variance 2, the expected value should be 2. And if we plug in the values, this part is 0.5 times 2 plus 0.5 times 2, and as expected, the result is 2. The second part is the spread of the means, which is 0.5 times 3 squared plus 0.5 times minus 3 squared. Here, 3 is the distance between the mean of the Gaussian mixture, which is 0, 
and the mean of the individual components. This part sums to 9, and this reflects the fact that the two components are fairly well separated. The variance of x is 9 plus 2, which is 11, and as you can see, the majority of this variance is due to the spread in the mean of the two components in the mixture. If we want, we can now approximate p of x by a Gaussian density, p hat, which has the same moments as p. The density p hat is illustrated in the figure. Obviously, any Gaussian approximation will introduce error, but at least this approximation seems to capture the Gaussian mixture reasonably well. Coming back to PDA filtering, we can summarize the steps that we need to perform in order to implement the algorithm. The update step can be separated into three steps. First, we compute the parameters of the Gaussian mixture, which are the weights, means, and covariances of the different components. Second, we compute the posterior mean using a weighted sum of the individual means. Third, we compute the covariance by computing both the average covariance and the average spread of the means. As you can see, assuming that we know how to compute the Gaussian mixture, the PDA algorithm is very simple to implement.